Hi, this is Billy Bean here with another segment of Troop by Billy Bean. Today's date is August 7, 2022, new in June. My equipment and my uh, YouTube channel went away. This is a new YouTube channel. I have a subscribe button in the lower right corner of my screen. Thanks for like, subscribe, and share. Some of my sources are God in the Bible, Patriots, Subscribers, Reality365, Alexander Makaris, Alex Cristoforo, Cliff High, Judy Bangton, Mikey Works, Israeli News Live, uh, Andre Matyanov, Regis Tremblay Plus, and AI Robot Kills 29 and Escapes. That's an interesting story. China versus Taiwan. Expected in November and August. We look forward to uh, President Trump being back. And I'd like to say welcome back to all 50 states, including Alaska, Hawaii, the First Nations, Cherokee, Navajo, Hopi, Chickasaw, Mohawk, Apache, First Nation, Pitt River in California, Mohegans, Yakima Nation in Washington State, Potawatomi in the Midwest, Oklahoma, Ojibwe Nation in Northern Minnesota, a proud people who want peace and justice, Choctaw, Abenaki Tribe, Cheyenne, Massantucket Pequot, Blackfoot in Montana, Spokane in Coville, Powhatan, Seminoles in Florida, Red Crow Tribe in Kentucky, Salt River Tribe in Arizona, and to say welcome back to the nations of Canada, England, France, Ireland, Philippines, South Africa, Netherlands, also called Holland, Indonesia, Scotland, Germany, Switzerland, New Zealand, Maldives, Nepal, Norway, Australia, Chile, Thailand, Belgium, Mexico, Brazil, Russia, Panama, Guam, U.S. Territory, Jamaica, and Iceland are living in Spain and other people in Spain, Wales in the U.K., Sweden, Italy, Puerto Rico, a U.S. Territory, Romania, Bermuda, Bahamas, British Territories, Morocco, Argentina, uh, Northern Marianas Island, a U.S. Territory, Denmark, Bolivia, Uganda, Iceland, Serbia, Bulgaria, Mauritius, and the newest Ukraine, the Czech Republic, Poland, Costa Rica, Malta, China, Hungary, Israel, and Finland. So let's get started. Okay, I have Patriot subscriber who says uh, Taiwan has more than 8,000 troops because that was a source I reported in my last video and uh, has a lot of firepower, military strength. Yeah, so that's going on. Okay, uh, had... Uh, Patriot subscribers talking about Governor Abbott of Texas is a double or an actor and is saying that the Texas State Guards have no bullets to load. They have to bring their own ammo. Uh, and they had fought the cartels and they're now fighting uh, the mules that are coming into Texas. So we'll see. Okay, I have a Patriot subscriber saying the IRS, uh, this individual is on Social Security, filed, but had a return and had filed it in uh, February. And, so, and she had it professionally done, and so far she's had four responses from the IRS just saying there are errors in the return and not giving her her money. She says, what's up with this? I would wonder too. I'm a Patriot subscriber. I have 35 days to retire from trucking. No more driving and crazy rain. Yeah, we're seeing, you know, they say it's the sun or other things causing us very strange weather. I'll be poor, but better off, I think. I'm a Patriot subscriber is talking about... Uh, an individual called Stephen Gardner, and he has information about uh, some things coming out and 
Uh, this Patriot subscriber is talking about Route 66. Uh, she used to live near there, and there were a lot of cattle mut mutations in that area. Okay, now we're getting to uh, Nancy Pelosi and her trip to Taiwan. I understand President Trump I made the public statement that Nancy was crazy, but, uh, you know, most people uh, agree that um, the Nancy Pelosi we're seeing is not the real one. The real one is in Greenland. This is a double. So Nancy Pelosi, she went, we know, recently to Taiwan, but I brought up my recent uh, video that uh, well, the flesh and blood Nancy had been on the payroll of the CCP, and this was a CCP stunt. Uh, so the CCP could roll out their military. And according to the source Duran, uh, which is um, Alexander um, Makaris and Alex Cristoforo, they have a common channel together, Duran. Nancy, the devil, Nancy went to South Korea, but no one met her. No, because she's not a real person. Okay. Now, uh, Monkey Works is bringing this information out about, uh, yeah, China launched missiles. This isn't, I think we should be clear, it isn't China that's under the control of Chairman Xi, who is aligned with the alliance, President Trump, President Putin, plus. Okay, so this was the CCP, and they launched missiles over Taiwan. And uh, Mikey Works is reporting this, that Blinken, the... Also an actor puppet, a part of the shadow U.S. government, says uh, the U.S. Uh, does not recognize Taiwan independence. And that would uh, appear to indicate that the U.S. is not going to get involved militarily with China or the CCP taking over Taiwan. Now, we have this information coming out from Andre Markyankov, a retired Russian military analyst. He's talking about the strength of the U.S. military, whether it would be versus Russia or China. He's giving some information. Now, he's saying the ground troops, the infantry, the army, the size of it is 500,000. We know that recently Russia sent into Ukraine about 200,000 troops, which we understood didn't begin to tap into the size of their their army, their military. So we don't, well, we don't know if that was all infantry or not. But this number, we would have to think, might be a little small compared to what we understand CCP is, what, one, one million uh, for their infantry? So, okay, but... Uh, Andre Martyakov is saying the U.S. is world class in their Navy and their subs. Their, uh, and he's saying that the U.S. could probably beat the CCP regarding Taiwan, but there would be a high loss of life and equipment and so forth. Okay. He's also reporting, he believes, or he has information, that Ukraine will begin its offensive in Kherson on Wednesday. 
So that's going on. Now, Israeli News Live, Stephen Benoon, formerly with the CIA, now as the ministry, but regularly gets information from the Pentagon, is saying, uh, JB has a handler. Well, we know that's an actor. Uh, and regarding Taiwan, he's saying China, uh, the CCP, is going to take Taiwan. I guess that would be some type of invasion. And what he's hearing from the Pentagon is this will happen in November. And he's saying there is some threat to the U.S. if we become involved in the war. And earlier, the U.S., military moved their military assets from Taiwan and he's saying the deep state yeah they want war they want the US to be involved in this Taiwan situation that would lead to a US economic depression and not to mention tens of thousands of lives lost of American sons and daughters so I don't think so Okay, Paul Bagley is bringing information out about this incident called Operation Breaking Dawn. It's a military operation against Israel. Now, he's saying uh, three groups are going to unite versus Israel. The Islamic Jihad group, Hezbollah, and Hamas, and that, uh, this would be about August 5, I believe, 340 rockets were fired from Gaza into Israel and they had guided uh, GPS on them, and the guided GPS came from Iran, uh, uh, and Russia was somehow involved in this technology, but Iran used satellite GPS to guide the missiles from Gaza into Israel. So according to this information from Paul Bagley, Operation Breaking Dawn, and, and uh, Pastor Paul has uh, some government contacts, that those rockets were guided with uh, via Russia and Iran. So we're seeing a setup here. All right, now... Reality 365 is talking about, yeah, China, a CCP. I believe we would be more correct using the term CCP and Taiwan. Uh, use the precision missiles. Yeah, they were in this practice or exercise around Taiwan. Now, this is news. Uh, Venezuela. Soon. Will be military exercises. You know, in South America, right on our border. Russia, Iran, and the China, I have to believe that's probably Chairman Z's part because he aligns with uh, Russia. Now, Iran and Russia have had very close relationships going back decades. So, so he's saying that in the near future, in Venezuela, it's Russia, Iran, and China 
and I have to believe that's the part under Chairman Z plus 10 other nations in the near future in Venezuela. So I would think we need to get our military from around uh, China and get it back over here in the U.S. Okay. Regis Tremblay recently interviewed um, a military individual, a uh, Dr. Cutbirth, and he's talking about the new Russian sub capability. And I'll draw a map for you. So here is a uh, Ukraine. We come down here, here is uh, Finland, we have Sweden, we have Norway. This is the Baltic Sea, right here. And then we would have land and then more of Europe. We have uh, the Atlantic Ocean. We have the U.S. East Coast. So, Regis Tremblay is bringing this out, and Dr. Cutbirth, with his expertise, saying yes. Russia could launch from their nuke, their subs, a nuke that has hypersonic capability, meaning it can change trajectory as it's going and go around land and over and under by itself the software is built in and it would take what minutes and it's so fast this hypersonic that it's virtually impossible to shoot down so they could fire this and hit the u.s within minutes with the hypersonic uh, missile I'll um, put that um, link for you. So yeah, the distance there is four th about 4,000 miles are about 7,000 kilometers. Yeah, I looked it up. So when we're talking about different uh, forms of strength and different types of weapons, uh, Sun Tzu, Art of War, yeah. Identify your enemy and definitely know what kind of weapons you have, what kind they have, yeah, definitely. Okay, Alex Cristoforo, a uh, Greek journalist, is bringing this out. There's supposedly a leaked document that comes from Ukraine government military and it's bringing out some inter interesting information you're saying that killed or wounded in the Ukraine forces military is 191,000 and there's zero information on how many are missing. The West weapons are being repaired in Poland. And there's not enough fuel to operate the howitzers, the M777. And so that's going on. We're hearing a number from documents being released and leaked. Okay, Alexander Makaras, a journalist out of London. Uh, I'll draw you a map and we'll, we'll go into this. Here's Luhansk, Donetsk. This is the Donbass area. We have Crimea, Odessa, Kherson, Nikolaev. We've got this front line going on. We have Izium Slovenes Kramatorsk. This will be the big battle. We have some smaller areas, Servanesk, uh, Soledad, 
Bakhmut. That's going on. And what we're hearing uh, with regard to Ukraine uh, is, yeah, correlating with a lot of losses. Okay. So this Bakhmut has a population of about 70,000. So we're talking about a, a fairly large uh, size. Now, Alexander Makaris is saying that Russia uh, will most likely control this area in the next two to three days. This report came out August the 6th. And is saying that, yeah, the weapons from the West are being repaired in Poland and only one-third is reaching the front line and that Russia is taking out the HIMARS when they are uh, put into the air. Okay, this Kursan offensive. We're hearing uh, rumors uh, that the Ukraine military... It does not favor, so the Ukraine military, the generals, it does not favor an offensive in the Kherson uh, area. But we've had earlier reports that Ukraine moved almost 60% of their artillery from this area down to Kursan just a few days ago. Okay. Now, there's a rumor, and we heard, uh, so Alexander Makaris is reporting, this uh, Kursan offensive to begin uh, on August 7th. So this is August 7. Now, the uh, Russian retired military analyst Andrei Makyakov said it was going to begin Wednesday. So his information was Wednesday. And that now, uh, today, which would be August 7, Ukraine in... Nikolaev, right here, is beginning a three-day lockdown, supposedly, so they can round up the Russian spies. And we can look for Russia to intensify the shelling in Kursan and Nikolaev. And uh, the Russian Ministry of Defense as putting out information that, and this, I think I have another source for this also, that three Ukrainian military brigades in Nikolaev are refusing to participate in the offensive due to the severe loss of their fellow uh, troops. So, that's going on. Now, so Alexander McCurr is also always talking Russia is strong in this area and they are moving out and taking in more villages. And this is the report that the Ukraine did redeploy their artillery to Kherson. So, okay, now, military summary. Uh, is bringing this information out in this area. Nikolaev, Kursan, we have Zaporozhia also in this area. That uh, Russia attacked the Ukraine. It says foreign legion. This is the mercenaries. They killed 80 soldiers and took out 11 vehicles. And some of this activity in this area around Kursan Nikolaev has to do with a power plant and bridges. Okay, now Russia took out of the Ukraine 63rd, 220 soldiers. Uh, 70 were killed and 150 wounded. 
In the 46th, Ukraine, 400 were killed. In the 59th, the 35th, and the 61st, these are Ukraine forces in this area. These soldiers are refusing to fight and they are deserting. So that's going on. So we can see us. Uh, a lot of activity going on around the world. We have it in Taiwan and China, uh, CCP. We have it in Ukraine and Russia. Uh, we have it in Israel. So, yeah, that's going on. Now, let's go to sci-fi. Okay, now this is a very interesting story. Uh, initially, information came out from Linda Moulton Howe about in 2018 when, allegedly, this incident happened. But I'm submitting to you, it's just now coming out August 5 on Judy Byington's site. I know how these things go. I think that there was an incident in 2018 and I think that there's an incident now. All right. So what happened in 2018? Okay, in Japan, there was a robotics firm. And we know, we've heard and seen on news, robots from Japan for decades. They were combining it with AI, and it was going to be used by the military and you can rest assured that the shadow U.S. military and the shadow U.S. government was heavily invested in this. Okay. And somehow or another, the AI military robot soldiers went berserk. And they could, you know, they're... Uh, robots with guns like soldiers so they fired bullets and they killed 29 of the Japanese scientists and somehow or another they learned they escaped now I'll give you some details that came from uh, that initial 2018 incident and this is describing the 2018 incident where the AI robot soldiers uh, killed 29 scientists. I submit to you it's happening right now and they're just kind of prepping the public. Oh yeah, go back and tell them that's, it's already happened in the past and now it's happening. Okay, so then the four AI robots went berserk and the lab workers were able to uh, deactivate two of them and the third they took apart and I guess the fourth one had some damage but the fourth one connected with a satellite, did a download to get information to rebuild itself even stronger than it had been, and escaped. Okay, so I'm saying that don't be surprised if we hear in the future, oh yeah, we told you about those AI robot soldiers, yeah. And Judy Byington says pray. So if just one could do that, or four, that kind of havoc, imagine what a lot of them could do. And uh, I know it's very interesting in Saudi Arabia, right along the Gulf of Aqaba, is this area called Midian. That's from the Bible. 
And Saudi Arabia had built this smart city right here. And they gave citizenship to an AI female called Sophia. And just last year, Sophia said, I want to go here and I want to uh, build my own robots with no humans involved. Do you think this might have something to do with that? We'll see. Okay. Dr. Michael Sala interviewed Sun Bo True Brother. And this was regarding Sasquatch. Or some people call them Yeti, a Bigfoot. Okay. And he's saying that Vancouver Island is a hot spot for them. That's in Canada. Now, he's coming out with this new information to me that the Sasquatch communicate using telepathy and that they have a hive mind. Now, I know recently Stephen Benoon uh, with Israeli News Live said the U.S. military had captured a Sasquatch, a Bigfoot, and that he could jump something like 45 feet and run, um, I don't know, 100 miles an hour. It was incredible. So, yeah. Information's coming out now about Bigfoot. So I submit to you when we start getting all this information out that we just need to look for uh, what are they trying to get across to us. Okay, Megan Rose uh, gives some information out about ET disclosure. Oh, yeah, we were going to tell y'all just as soon as we couldn't keep it secret anymore. Okay. And Megan is talking about there was a political meeting. Uh, she doesn't give a date, but she said says President Trump was there. And uh, the White Hats, the Galactic Federation of Worlds. Okay, now this is information she's bringing out. This is about ETs being in pods. And this has something also to do with those... Uh, Ark ships and uh, individuals saying, oh, I decided to incarnate on earth, you know, contrary to the way that God births souls. Uh, and, uh, but, so Megan Rose is talking about these pods and they have thousands of ETs in them. I think that's in Antarctica. Yep. And there are no souls in those bodies. All right. And she's saying, yeah, the souls are incarnating on earth. Well, the question in my mind is, how is it they're taking over physical bodies? Hmm? And what is going on exactly? All right. So she's bringing this out. Now... She's also clarifying information from the ETs, like the Anunnaki are not cedars and they're not Galactic Federation of World. They're from Nibiru. That's a tall, gray ET. They have skin like a dolphin, humanoid. They have male and female genders. And they do genetic manipulation on humans. And they have working agreements with the Draco reptilians. Okay. And that part of their genetic manipulation is to rewire the human brain. But she's making, and I see other uh, individuals coming out with this ET disclosure, making this statement that ETs did not create humans. 
And initially, I understand uh, part of that Atlantis Wars went back to reptilian versus Lyrans. And Lyrans are not human. They are humanoid. But they did not create humans either. God created humans. And I see uh, information coming out now. Uh, no. The E.T., these cedars, did not create humans. Yeah. Let's get on board with the same, you know, information. Okay. Now we'll move ahead to heads up. As if the escaped AI military soldiers, so it's not enough to, yeah, give us a heads up. Okay, this is Israeli News Live, Stephen Benin. Okay. On August... Uh, third, something hit the sun. And they're telling us, I submit, because they can't cover it up exactly. And there was a meeting of the U.S. Space Force, and there was several asteroids. And so what's going to happen is the, this is going to bring about some kind of sun changes that are going to affect Earth weather, like floods and drought and other things. Yeah, part of that uh, asteroid uh, meteorite debris coming in was to uh, cause significant wind and hail and like that. Okay. Now, this is from Dabu77, talking about sinkhole. A sinkhole up here. This is in Chile. And uh, it was like 650 feet deep, which would be 198 meters. And the width was 100 feet or 31 meters very large it's near san diego it's 413 miles north of san diego or 665 kilometers north of san diego so i would like to point out that sinkholes are um a sign that things are happening inside the earth. Now, Mary Greeley is going to give a report, some information on New Madrid. And I do know that in the New Madrid area of the U.S., and that's like uh, Mississippi, Tennessee, kind of in this mid area, and uh, I think it was the 1800s. We had like three earthquakes. They initially said they were nines. I think they've downgraded them a little bit. But, um, I mean, the force here, this was in a three-month period, was so strong that it caused the Mississippi River to flow backwards for a while. It created, well, all kinds of earthquakes and uh, created a new lake, I think, in Arkansas during this time period. Okay, about uh, one year before this happened, sinkholes were opening up all over in this area. So now, Mary Greeley is bringing some information out. She's saying the New Madrid area had some small, is, is having small earthquakes, like maybe one to four or so. And they're shallow and they're causing sand blows, but uh, this is an area, yeah, that's overdue for something happening. Okay, Monkey Works is putting this out. That in Austin, Texas, we the rain 
comes down, but it does not touch the ground. So it's vaporizing in the air. And they've had in Austin, Texas, 60 days without rain. He put this out on August 6th. Yeah, we need to pray for rain. Absolutely. Let's do that. Okay. Let's move on to a new section. Be happy. Yeah, we want some good information. So be happy. We know that we're going globally onto a big change and that more and more people are waking up and saying, hey, what's going on? And the mainstream media is going down, not being believed. So it's a good sign when we have a, a mainstream media outlet, something like Sky News, actually putting out some truth. Yeah, we say that's good. Okay. And they're, they're uh, bringing this out. Well, actually, there really wasn't global warming. Don't be afraid. Uh, because uh, now, uh, they, one of the things they said, global, uh, humans are doing burning fossil fuels and they're going to heat up the atmosphere and destroy the earth. Nothing humans do is capable of causing global climate change. That was propaganda. And he's saying, uh, this is truth. In the uh, Great Barrier Reef, I believe that's off of Australia, they have record coral uh, growth there. It's a good thing. There is no global warming. So we like truth coming out. Okay, and look ahead, we have Cliff High talking about the deep state and their hold on banks, and he's saying, you know, uh, it's good to get your money in cash and use it as much as possible because that weakens the deep state in their uh, bank control. So then the Federal Reserve will go down. Uh, the deep state is close to collapsing on a global basis. And multiple sources are saying President Trump back soon. And we say bring it, Father. Okay, a short prayer. First, the cleansing prayer modeled by Jean Decode. We remove permission to be in us, on us, around us, on earth, off world, any dimension, any person, place, or thing, not of God. Any assemblage of fallen angels, AI, nanobot, and other forms of tech, any non-terrestrial species, spirit, thought form, operating system, genetic overlay, past, present, or future. So this prayer is from uh, the King James Version of Habakkuk. Chapter 3 and plus. And the name of it is Embrace God. Embrace God as he comes from the south, from the desert between Midian and Egypt. Your bow, O Lord, is seen, and your light arrows are seen, and your glittering spear is seen. The sun and the moon will stand still as you, O Lord, march through the land of the heathen in anger. The Lord God is our strength. Our God will make us to walk in high, dry, and safe places. And we say, thank you, Father, Son, Jesus, whom many call Yeshua, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I say to my family and friends, remain steady out there. Continue to pray. God is in charge, and he is on the move. I love you, and I'll see you soon.